basically on technology. Technology is using the latest, you know, science and engineering and, and applied science to our lives. I know that many people think of technology as computers and smartphones and all that, uh, but there, it's so much wider. But I will limit. Um, in fact, let me get to uh, let me get to this. Uh, the question was, what guidance can you give to families in regards to technology? And basically, I look at it in this order. Number one, the danger of distraction. Because as a pastor for over 30 years, and now speaking in conferences, speaking in retreats, speaking in classrooms, this device, a smartphone, is nearly irresistible. When, when it buzzes or vibrates or pings, there's almost a visceral response of, you know, got to do something, got to respond to it. There's a haptic, you know, I want to touch it. And, and the first danger is distraction. It says in the Bible, Matthew 6, right here it is. Seek first the kingdom of God. Now, let me give you a visual. This is what I do in every classroom. I tell them, I say, hey, what's this? Okay, what's this? Okay, you guys know what this is. I said, you need to put this to bed at night. It's unwise to sleep with it and have it distract you all night long, vibrating in your bed. And then take this. I said, what's this? Bible. I said, plug in your phone, put your Bible on top of it. So that when it lights up at night doing notifications, it won't bother you. And in the morning, look at this, you have a choice. To get to this, you got to go through this. And what does it say? What did Jesus say? But seek ye what? Say it out loud. First. First. Yeah. The rule, the kingdom, the rule of God. Seek God first. Okay? Every day, you get a choice. What's going to be first? Are you going to see what all your friends are doing? Or are you going to see what the God of the universe is doing? So the first thing is distraction. The second thing is in Proverbs. Technology can lead us to isolation. And listen to it, Proverbs 18. There's so many very powerful truths in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 18 says in verse 1, let me get there. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. There is such a problem with isolation, no accountability, no community, building selfishness, insulated from the world. Uh, you know, people like their avatars. They can design this, this persona, that, that how they want to be, and it is totally self-centered and self-focused, self-designed, it's artificial, and all the pains of relationships are avoided. There are so many young people that, that can't carry on a conversation. They can't have a, an emotional or a heart-to-heart -heart talk about hardly anything because they're so isolated. By the way, I think it's I think Bloomberg Financial News recently put a headline in that 80% of all pornography is consumed on mobile devices. That's another danger. It's the third one, pollution. Uh, I have, uh, let me see, Matthew 6, 33, Proverbs 18.1. Here's another one, Philippians 4, 8. You know what that says? Whatever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of good report, think on those things. And Psalm 101, 3. Can you see that far down the board? Yes, yeah. Okay. You know what Psalm 101, 3 says? I have made a covenant with my eyes. I will not set any wicked thing before my eyes. I call this a sacred vow. And that's what technology needs to make us make. 
a sacred vow. Number one, I'm not going to be distracted. I'm going to seek God first. He's more important. Number two, I'm not going to isolate myself. I'm going to turn my screen around so you can see what I'm looking at. And, and I want to not hide and isolate. Number three, I am not going to grieve and quench the Holy Spirit. I'm going to make a sacred vow that my technology is not going to be gaming that is murdering and bloodshed. You know, the Bible says that's wrong. It's not going to be occultic. It's not going to be anything that grieves the Holy Spirit. But what, what is the pathway for technology? And, and real quickly, and I want you to think about this, uh, because as, answering this question really got me going. What was the greatest technology of the day in the Bible time? What, what country had the greatest technology? Well, in the Old Testament, it was Babylon. Babylon was the, the head of gold, the empire that had all, they had the hanging gardens, they had the engineering, they had the technology, they had the warfare, they had the learning, you know, all of the astrology comes from Babylon. And where did God's people go into captivity? They went to Babylon. There's a whole chapter of the Bible about how to get people weaned off from addiction to technology that was polluting their lives. And you know, that whole chapter was written by the man God picked to disciple 50,000 Israelites who returned from the Babylonian captivity, went back to the Holy Land, and they, they were not knowing God through his word. And so Ezra wrote, by the way, you say, how do you know this? If you read the Jewish encyclopedia, it's called Encyclopedia Judaica, the Jews all believed that Ezra wrote the 119th Psalm to the children of Israel returning from the Babylonian captivity. So I agree. I think that he probably did. And you know what he said? How you have the divine pathway back to not being addicted to immersed in the technology of your day? He wrote the 119th Psalm and he, he wrote it most likely around what you see repeated over and over in these 176 verses. First of all, he said, I will. Um, and these, these I wills, let me read you one. Verse seven, I will praise you, Psalm 119, seven. Verse eight, I will keep your statutes. These are his resolves. He says, this is what I'm gonna do, God, to keep my life going the right direction. Verse 15, I will meditate on your precepts. Verse 16, I will delight myself in your statutes. Verse 16, again, I will not forget. Uh, verse 32, I will run in the pathway of your commandments. By the way, if you can see, you see the colors? Can you see that in my Bible? I actually marked these. You'll find 19 times Ezra says, I will do something. These are the resolves so he can resist the, the overwhelming allure of Babylonian technology. He says, God, you're going to be, well, I will, verse 46, speak of your testimonies. Verse 47, I will delight myself in your commandments. At the end of verse 48, I will meditate. So all these resolves. Then the second things he does is he makes these prayers, kind of like little without ceasing prayers. And, and these are great. The, uh, verse 10, uh, Oh, let me not wander. That was a prayer of Ezra that he taught these people. Oh, Lord, don't let me wander. Verse 12, teach me your statutes. Uh, verse 18, open my eyes. Do you see the, the prayer? And all of them have to do with me or my. Um, verse 26, teach me your statutes. Verse 28, strengthen me. Uh, keep going. Verse 37, Turn away my eyes from looking at things that are worthless. Whoa. Technology? There's a verse. Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. That was one of his prayers. So first his resolves, I will, 
Lord, by your grace, from now on, do this. He has 19 of those. Prayers, all these me's and my's, where, where it says, like verse 66, teach me. Um, you know, verse 88, revive me. I did all these in green in my Bible. I can just, they jump off the page, you know. Uh, verse 108, teach me. Um, verse 107, revive me. On and on we go. Those are his prayers. But then we have his habits. And his habits are where he says, I have done something. Uh, verse 10, with my whole heart, I have sought you. Verse 11, I have hidden your word in my heart. Verse 13, I have declared with my lips your judgments. Verse 14, I have rejoiced. These are his habits. So basically, for me, technology is all about the, the priority of Christ. I'm going to seek him first. I'm not going to isolate myself. I don't want to pollute myself. And I've made a sacred vow that I will set nothing wicked before my eyes. And the road back is actually written down in the 119th Psalm. And it's a bunch of resolves that I'm going to walk in your way, a bunch of prayers open my eyes and a bunch of habits. I have chosen your way. So that's what I would say about technology. Well, and that's a, a great application for parents or a, a tool for parents if they're struggling with something like that with yeah. their kids to use Psalm 119 yeah. uh, as, yeah. that, as that great. pathway. And I think you are, you're such a great person to speak on this area of technology because you don't shun it. You use technology, um, you know, in so much of your ministry, you use it for the advancement of the gospel. It's not, so it's not like you're pushing technology to the side, you yeah. use it. And so to speak on it, I think is, uh, is just awesome. Good point. So, yeah. Well, uh, Carl, you're so sweet. I'll just tell you one quick story. Um, everything that I've ever said in any class, uh, a team of volunteers actually posts all the time, and they're going into the past all the way back into the 90s. They're posting way back and making videos of stuff I've taught. And I just got um, a, it was uh, just, let's see, it was about January. I got a note from someone in London, England. And they said that they were riding the subway in London and that they were hopeless. They'd just come from the clubs and drinking and everything. And they wrote hope from God into Google. And guess what came up? A season of hope. It was a Christmas service that I did at a concert and it was only five minutes long. And that's the length of YouTubers. And it was me looking out at the crowd and saying, some of you are hopeless and you're partied and wasted and you need Christ. And I went through the gospel and I said, right now, bow your heads. Well, this lady told me she was sitting on the subway and she bowed her head. Here she's got her YouTube going. An old sermon. I couldn't believe she was watching an old sermon. She bowed her head on the subway. And I said, if you want Christ, raise your hand. She said she raised her hand on the subway. I thought, what are those people thinking, looking at her with her head down, eyes closed, raising her hand? And she wrote me at months later, actually it was six months later. And she said, I want you to know what happened to me. She said, I just bowed my head and prayed and called on the Lord, like you said, and she said, I didn't really think anything of it. But she says, as I look back over six months, she said, my life completely has changed. Mm -hmm. She said, I don't club. I don't drink. I don't drug. She says, I used to, to stalk men. I wanted to be immoral. She said, I just collected men. She said, when I called on Christ, she said, he changed everything. She said, I actually watch more than three minute long YouTube. She says, I'm, I'm watching hours and hours of Bible teaching on my phone. She said, my life has changed. She said, I just want to tell you, I won't meet you till heaven. But she said, I raised my hand on the subway in London. Wow. And I thought amazing. that's technology yeah. Yeah. that the Lord is using. Okay. Right. Do you have one more question or is my time up? 
Yeah, no, I think I think we'll wrap it up there. I think that was such a, a good, I mean, the content, and it was just just amazing. And the, the applications and the tools that people can walk away with, mm-hmm. um, I think uh, has just been incredible. So uh, we want to say again, we're, we're really going to miss having you here yes, yes. this summer. Um, but the fact that we could do this and uh, still get you to speak to our our guests uh, through this means is uh, just a great opportunity. It was a privilege. Do you think I can close in prayer? Yeah. Do we have time? Please do. Okay. Okay. And by the way, I'm going to wear my Word of Life t-shirt just so I don't miss out. I'm going to wear my campground t-shirt that I have so I feel like I'm there. Awesome. Okay. But let's, let's close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, I pray that we would do what your word says. Your word we want to hide in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. With our whole heart, we want to seek you. And Lord, I pray that someone watching one of these Q&As, that you will stir their heart to make those holy resolves and to start those holy habits that Ezra talks about and to start praying those prayers to quicken me, to enlighten me, to strengthen me. My soul cleaves to the dust. Quicken me according to your word. We believe you, Lord. We, we raise our hands to you right now and say, Lord, help me, change me, strengthen me. Let me seek you first and your righteousness and everything else will come. We're weak, but you are strong. And we bow to you now in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 